A lot of people that have visited here claim to have seen you. Do you think you could do something for us? That's lies one of the UK government's best kept secrets, the Kelvin and Hatch secret nuclear bunker. Above ground, this Cold War relic appears as a very ordinary looking bungalow, however 125 feet below are a series of tunnels and rooms that were designed to accommodate up to 600 people from the British government in the event of a nuclear attack, right up until its decommissioning in 1992. Although it was never used for its intended purpose, today spectral forms and supernatural events have been witnessed taking place in its empty corridors. The bunker began its life back in the early 1950s when the land that the site sits on was purchased by the British government to use for an elaborate air defence radar system known as Rota. Now, although this system was very short lived, the site was later expanded and transformed into a facility that the British government would be sent in the event of a nuclear attack. Those selected to come down here would have been expecting to spend a minimum of three months, and therefore the bunk had enough facilities and enough supplies to support life for extended periods of time. There's even a sick bay and dormitory down here along with a BBC radio station that would have been used to broadcast to the outside world. Now I have to say, having been walking around here for the last couple of hours, you really do appreciate what a dark and quite dingy environment it would have been to live, especially knowing the horrors that awaited on the outside world. And maybe that's why so many people have described this place as nothing more than a concrete coffin. After being decommissioned in 1992, the land was sold back to the parish family, who decided to open the bunker to the public as an attraction and museum. And it's over the last 30 years that strange events have been experienced at the site. In recent years, visitors to the bunker have experienced seeing dark shadow figures moving in and out of different rooms, often accompanied by poltergeist activity. Along with this, one of the most active areas of the bunker has been sighted, and that seems to be the sick bay area, where both mediums and paranormal investigators say that they're picked up on something that's rather dark and possibly even evil. Now, there's actually been one alleged death take place here at the site, and the story goes that concrete was poured into the structure here both day and night for months on end and one morning the workers turned up to start their day and they noticed the foreman's hard hat floating on top of the freshly poured concrete. He was never to be seen again, and although he's not been sighted, some people do think that this may be the man responsible for some of the unexplainable events taking place here. I suppose the strangest thing about the bunker is that it was never actually used and yet there were reports of hauntings down here. Again, we don't know really what ghosts are, what creates hauntings, but I have to say, in my experience, they do have some connection to historical events, whether that be an echo or whether that be the dead returning in some way. But let's say the fact this was never used, why should there be ghosts down here? Um, there's no logical reason for it in, in terms of historical events. I do have one theory though, and it could potentially be that Whilst this place was being built and whilst it had been set up, there was this huge anticipation and huge basically waiting for a nuclear attack. Everything here was built with the intent in being used. And I do wonder if maybe all of this emotion and all of this sort of stressful energy is contained within the building here. And it's almost playing out today in an alternate reality. Later on in the evening, we decided to have a walk around of the bunker to try and familiarise ourselves with the different areas we'd be investigating. 
Oh, I do not like it. Listen, this is how quiet it is. These are all original as well. I don't like it, Nick. Look at those That's old all. style cans of spaghetti. Tesco Valley spaghetti. <laughs> you don't like it in this bit? No, not at all. I'm, hmm, I think, I was going to say, I don't, I feel a bit weird in here, but I don't know if that's just because it is so quiet. Oh, no, no. Don't do dummies and figurines and things. This hospital as well. What's going on with that one? Well, she's a... It, uh, what? I think it's a hand. I hope it's a hand. Well, uh, either that we've got a very excited patient. <laughs> we have got to watch out for these mannequins tonight. Yes, definitely. In what hard. sense? Well, the <laughs> if we see a person in the corner of the room, it may well be a mannequin. I thought you meant as in they've been known to uh, wander. Um, she doesn't look very well. None of them look very well. That's probably because of the hospital. This is like a documentation room. It's like oh. medical records and stuff. What are all these? Guys here, canvas. Oms. Possibly. Oms meters. What? Ohms. They're not like some sort of what measurement are they? Radiac survey meter. Oh, radi radi so radi it's yeah, radiac. Yeah, like radiation. Geiger counters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dead Oh man, there's loads of computers. Wow. We're at the same bit. Oh, I was, I was getting confused as to where I'm running. <laughs> it's a thing in a case. I was like, is that a person standing there? Old typewriters. Did they have computers during the war? Oh look, these might be. Yeah, well, it was. It, this was operational up until 1992. Oh, they're 90s computers then. That makes sense. There might be some 80s in here. Yeah. Oh, this is a generator. We continued to explore the bunker and decided on a number of areas to set up some locked off night vision cameras that would be left running throughout the night, including one in the sick bay, the dormitory and one down on the lowest level of the bunker. With everything set we went lights out and switched to our night vision cameras to begin our evening investigation. So we're in the first dormitory room. I still really don't like it in here. Yeah, Sophie's picking up funny vibes from in this one. You say Luke, you felt a bit strange in this one as well. Yeah, again, I don't know if it's the physical layout of it, if there's something more to it. It's uh, all of the top floor for me is the creepier bits, but it's downstairs, bottom floor as well, I find. Hmm. Very eerie. Is there anybody in here with us? Just to know. When we speak, it goes through the vents above and like echoes slightly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as for outside sounds, there's nothing. No. I keep. I just keep, have seen so many like shadow sort of people just moving out of the way of into like into the shadows as we've been sort of walking around. Yeah. I just like I saw another one sort of dart to the left in between those beds. Is it look behind you? But every time we stop talking, I can hear so many like noises of voices and stuff all around. But all like they're just in the other rooms outside of where we are. Pretty strange. This is supposed to be one of the more this one of the more yeah is there anybody in the sick bay here oh 
I just got a rush of like, just I don't know, like a rush of something. Chills? Yeah, yeah, just like a shiver went up my spine. Really? Yeah. That's quite rare that happens for you actually. Yeah. No, it's just as the light, a little bit after the light went off, it was just like, I don't know, just a sort of shiver. Not particularly nice, is it? No. A lot of people that have visited here claim to have seen you. Do you think you could do something for us? Could you make a noise? We don't know who is still in this bunker. What you're here for, whether you, you're related to the personnel that were supposed to be stationed here, whether you constructed this place, but no idea who you are, so it'd be really interesting if you could come forward and let you know tell us who you are. It's not bad, <laughs> yes, it was in my mask. <laughs> That's, that's I don't know the if thing. it's because it's just absolutely dead, the sound. Yeah. So again, who knows how much of it is, uh, how much of the hauntings here is people having Psychologically, their... Psychologically, yeah. Yeah, psychological stuff. Catch with the uh, thing next to you as well. The psychological stuff, you know, people being affected because of the darkness and, like, the different levels in the... Yeah, as such, we're, like we were saying earlier, how... Because it's all underground, you've got no daylight, you've got no concept of time or anything down here. Yeah. We continued down to the next level of the bunker, and after 11 minutes, the locked off camera that we'd left recording in the sick bay picked up what appears to be the sound of a lady talking. Or see uh, where that map is on the back wall. Yeah. Some like a shadow figure moving to the left of that towards that down there. No, no, no. This was like full figure, and I got the chills up my back as it, as I saw it go past. Somebody pretty, over there. I'm pretty sure it wasn't you because it was like it was too scared of the person over there, and it like staggered and sort of went down behind. I don't know, over here somewhere behind the desk. Who's over there? Hello? Is there anyone who wants to come forward and talk to us, please? Yeah? What we just recorded is quite possibly one of our best visual captures to date. A shadow figure can clearly be seen walking out into the corridor and due to how amazing this piece of footage is, we tried our very best to find a natural explanation. Both myself and James were accounted for as we were holding cameras at the time and were clearly not moving. Sophie is the only other person that could have created the shadow, however she was adamant that she was stood still looking over the railings at the time. To back this up, the reason Sophie had alerted us was because she'd heard the sound of dragging coming from downstairs, which is actually captured on James's camera. The fact that this sound was recorded and no sound of Sophie's movements or footsteps, which should clearly be heard if she was moving due to how much the staircase echoes, enforces that this shadow figure was indeed created by none of us. What did you hear? I don't know, some kind of shuffling. It wasn't like a solid footstep, but it was like a... like that. 
I so, think it was that way, but because I was stood here, ooh. that was me just then in my coat. That was it? Yeah, but um, yeah, I was stood here and it sounded like it was coming from down there. Do you just look at those last rooms and make it down? That's what we hear there now. Yeah. yeah. We've got a lead. It yeah. sounded like a shovel. She went that way. Yeah. But what's in there? What's that way? That's strange because that's the room that we were in earlier and you were like, or it was weird being in here in the dark. Oh. The uh, command room thing. Is that the room in here? Yeah. Was that that? It was like a... So you heard it on, you heard it on like concrete then? This is wooden floor in here. It was, it was, I think it was out here. We were unable to find what had created the shuffling sound that Sophie had heard, so we decided to return back up to ground level and introduce some different equipment into our investigation. Yeah, so I got this little portable radio off eBay, I think it cost me like five or something. You said it was 99p earlier. Well, five and 99p. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, it wasn't very much, but it's an old school manual one um, with manual tuning. And so we were thinking if we run this in here, it shouldn't get any radio frequencies. And we tried it in the cafeteria and it can't actually pick up any stations. No, we wouldn't expect so, any this far underground. Yeah. So in the sort of spirit of spirit box, we try and run it on a static station, wondering if maybe there's like residual um, like telecoms from here possibly come through. We just scan it through now to see the show pick up. So there's no nothing press through radio. It's physically impossible, really, for anything outside to get through the yeah. to, to the and bunker. AM. Nothing at all. No. Which is because AM is bad anyway. If you try and pick it up on yeah, the radio, so. but that's as expected. That's what that's what you would expect. Yeah. Is anyone in here who can talk to us through this radio? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Try to get up? Yeah. Is there anyone in here with us? If there is, could they just move? Can you just move near where this little green dot is? And maybe try talking, see if we can see you. You want to try as hard as you can to interact with us somehow? Yeah, use our energy if you need to. Use your energy from these cameras. See if you can manipulate the lights on that box. Sophie, you try, you try talking to him. Why is it me that needs like a woman or a girl to talk to that girl's voice? A woman. <laughs> <laughs> a woman makes you sound old. I'm old. I'm middle-aged-ish. If there's any doctors here, could you come in and help us, please? I feel really sick and dizzy. I think I need some medical attention. Hello? Try. 
him to look scary. <laughs> Weird. That's terrifying. Oh, it's interference with the camera. Sounds like the thousand voices of hell. I don't like that. My phone. What a phone? To bump that one. Sophie, where was your hat? My hands are holding the thing where they have been the whole time. Right. What the? Mm -hmm. so, uh, Luke, look, step back a step. Now step forwards. I just saw, like, like the like tips of four fingers sort of curled away from the door, from the other side. It was like... Here, yeah, like it, like look like that, like from that side, sort of four fingers turning away from the door. So like, that was so clear. I thought that was one of your hands. We're both holding stuff, so it can't be. A... Well, you've got you've got rings on your fingers as well. Let's just start into the corridor. Let's let's go up there because it might be like a sign to be out there. Yeah, I don't think there's any way that could have been your hand. No, that was the noise behind us. Hello? You heard that as well? I heard it. Sophie. <laughs> I don't even know, I don't know, just out of shock, lad. Who's that? Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights on. Hello? Where's the switch? Who made that noise? Is that the switch? Is that the switch? Is that the switch? Where's the lights? Hello? 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 The light switch is over there. <laughs> Did the uh, the light? It wasn't that stick. No. Was it the the light from up there? Yeah. It's on the floor. Is that behind us? Mm. Yeah, it's this. What we had heard turned out to be the sound of one of our infrared lights crashing to the floor and after reviewing the footage from the locked off camera we could find no explanation or cause for this. Right. I can understand if we've just been walking around in this room but we've been out for what, 15 minutes? Yeah. I mean, the only, the only reason it would have fallen is if it slipped or if it was pushed off. But it shouldn't have done. I mean, I mean, that was weird. That there's, to be honest, there's no way anything is going to fall off that because it's, look, it's angled backwards. Well, the setup of it was, so we were very careful, the set of it basically <laughs> was that, I see this is I'd attached. I moved it to about there. So that's sitting on top of there? And then yeah. Moved that down. That was down. So that was the setup of it. It was like that. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, really stop, stop, wait, wait. Have you got a camera? Focus the camera on that. I'll go over there, open and close that door. 
See if it, it really like, vibrate. yeah, if it vibrates it enough. Because we must have gone through that door a few times, so I reckon it would have shaken it. I can't see it being that. I can't see it being that, it's some distance away. Yeah. Nothing. Not even a draft. Right, so we were here before. What are we literally talking about? Oh yeah, let's head off. <laughs> yeah, we were just saying, should we go upstairs? Still feel like. I think the reason like we were so shocked there because it's been such a quiet night up until now. It was literally a case of like, And it was so loud. Yeah, I think it was just a case of like caught us so off guard with like it's a flight or fight. Yeah. And I'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you, th you think as well, you think as well, like how much stuff is kind of just um set up at about around yeah. here. I mean that like that could have fallen. Like anything could have fallen. Yeah. And it happens to be the thing that's in the room we were just near. Yeah. After we start getting uh, activity and things happen nearby. It may be that it's something that's out of place. What do you mean? In terms oh, of... Oh, like it's not supposed to be there, it's so it's, it's trying to get... It's not supposed to be, it's not set up there, it's not of the era. It's, you know, it's something that's out Maybe. of time and out of place, and that's the reason. We drew our investigation at the Kelvin and Hatch secret nuclear bunker to a close, and although at the time it didn't seem like we'd experienced much, upon reviewing our footage, we certainly recorded some rather intriguing things. 